recognize that Leviticus is really at the core, the center of the Pentateuch. And I think that should tell us something. The core of the Pentateuch, uh, beginning in the, with the latter part of Exodus, the construction, the instruction, very detailed instructions for the tabernacle, then the building of the tabernacle, and then you open up in Leviticus 1 and the Lord cries out or calls out to his people from the tabernacle. This tells us that this is like core. The Mosaic law is about the divine presence, um, God being with the people, the Lord Adonai being with his people. And the tent is variously, uh, you know, called different things. But one of the, the, the names for the tent is the, the tent of meeting. This is where you come to meet with Adonai, the king. So that is to say that the priestly system, the system of sacrifice and um, and temple and the, the cult that surrounds it. By the way, I should say, I, I re realize a p potential for misunderstanding here, and I try to, if I don't explain it, avoid this term. But since I've used the term now, I need to explain it. When I use the term cult, I am not using that term as we often do in modern parlance to talk about like a, a, a deviant sect from a mainstream religion. Um, so we, we sometimes talk, talk about cults in the church today as being forms that break off from Christianity and are no longer Orthodox Christianity. That's not what I mean by the term cult. The term cult, uh, as I'm using it, is based on its Latin root, uh, which has to do with worship, right? So cultivation, worship, this kind of a thing. And so um, when we talk about a cult in antiquity, we're talking about a, a ritual system that's set up for devotion to a god. All right, so the Israelite cult is the the tabernacle, and then the temple, and the priest, uh, the priestly system. So that's what I mean. It, it, just so I don't uh, confuse anybody when I use the term cult, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sacrificial worship. So again, this is at the center of the Pentateuch, which shows us that the presence of God with His people it's relational, right? It's all about the presence of God, God with his people and God's gracious initiative for covenant relationship and the maintenance of that covenant. So I, I want to invite you to think about Leviticus, the priestly system, as ongoing maintenance of that uh, gracious initiative given by God to his people for maintenance of this covenant relationship, which is all based on the grace of God, the gift of rescuing, redeeming his people, and then uh, drawing them into fellowship with him, and now giving them this system so that they can maintain this relationship. I love this quote from uh, Benjamin Summer. He does use the term P here, in here several times, and I've already introduced P to you, so I feel like I can, can use it. He writes this in his uh, book on the divine bodies. Benjamin Summer is a great Jewish scholar. Quote, the goal of the events at Sinai, as P describes them, is divine imminence, and the laws are but the means to that end. It follows that the many modern scholars who speak of P as essentially legalistic or as glorifying the law misrepresent this document. P's main concern, catch this, P's main concern is not law, but the divine presence that observance of the law makes possible. All right, so the term for God's presence or glory, kavod, this is the idea that God's kavod takes up uh, residence among the people, that that's God's desire to dwell with his people, and that this system that God gives his people is kind of the necessary parameters to make sure that uh, corrupt, sinful, mortal beings can live with the divine kavod, right? So I want you to hear that very clearly. Leviticus is all about relationship, the maintenance of that covenant relationship that God sets up with his people. All right.